Hey guys, welcome back. In this one, I will continue from where I left off. In the last part, we modeled everything except for the label. By the way, let me bring back that image plane. Shift and we back. So as I said, I modeled everything except for the label. So let's do that real quick. I will grab the bottle. By the way, before getting into that, let me delete these materials. Then... I'll, I could also delete that projection mesh he used in the first part. By the way, if you haven't watched it, you can find it on the channel. So let's select the bottle and I will simply grab these polygons by holding right mouse. Then, as you can guess, I will split this out. I will call this label. Move it up. And I'm going to hide the other ones to focus on this one only. Let's scale this in. I will go into point mode. I will deselect everything. I will just click off, then right click and grab the brush tool. Now I will just adjust these points. Okay, now it is time to enable sub D, hit Q, click away. Sometimes it is quite hard to see your subdivided mesh. To see it more clearly, I will come over to the options and enable ISO line editing. Yeah, now it's going to be much easier to see. I will adjust these points for the last time. Now, I know it doesn't look very really well, but I will project this on the bottle. Let's do that. Alt and Shift, add in a shrink wrap deformer. Grab the bottle as a target object. Then that should fix most of the problems. I usually use another deformer along with the shrink wrap deformer and this deformer is smoothing. I will put it above the shrink wrap deformer and it will simply even out these polygons. Now let's apply these deformers, unhide the bottle. I will probably need to push this out slightly. So normal move tool, move these out. I see a little bit tension over here, so I will try to even out this area. Yeah, now it looks way better. Now we can head over to the UV edit layout to unwrap this. I will start off with the label. I'm going to select them all, Control A, then reset them. Then I will go to the projection tab and apply frontal projection. This will cause some distortion though because this is a 2D projection but our mesh is 3D, it has depth. If I open up the UV map you will see what I am talking about. Just keep an eye on these polygons. I will apply relax UV. It is a subtle distortion. But remember we are going to put a label. We are going to put a logo or an identity of a company so that surface should be distortion free. This is one of the important things whenever you work with this kind of models, you know, because your clients will really focus on their identities or logos. So the surface should be distortion free. I will go easy on these ones because I will not put any textures on these objects. So let me select all the polygons and reset them first, then apply automatic tools like the packed one. That seems okay, not perfect, but maybe I could move this out and unwrap them. Let's align the UVs, then I will pack them. Okay, this is going to be more than enough. Most of the time, you can apply these automatic tools and call it a day as long as you don't texture these objects. Let's unhide the other one, select them all and apply the same tool. And select them all, click on Packed. Perfect. Now, let me select the label and pack it. Once I have done that, I will switch to Paint Layout because I will need a UV texture to use in Photoshop 
To do that first, I will open up by the paint 3D setup wizard. I will deselect all except for the label. Say next. Make sure you have this option turned off because you know we have just unwrapped the UVs. Say next. 2K will be more than enough. Say finish, and here we go. Now this object has a texture to paint on, but this is not what we want. We want a UV layout. By the way, let me turn this off and go to the layers. Let's select the object. Okay, so basically I will come over to the layer and click on create UV mesh layer. This is going to give us a new layer, which will have UV information in it. Now let's export this out, save texture as. JPEG will be fine. I'm going to call this UV label. And yeah, this is going to be it. Now let's go back to the standard layout. I could delete that material. I do not need it anymore. Now I will call this bottle and I will scale this to its original size. As a reference, I will add in a cube and set this to 25. Select the bottle and scale that down until it fits in that cube. Let's delete it and I will reset the position of this bottle. First, I need to go into word coordinates and here we go. Now we could slowly get into rendering. So I will open up the settings first and set this to Octane. Give it a few seconds to log in. Okay, let's close this and open up the live viewer window. I will snap this to the side. Then I will open up the Octane render settings. I always set this to pet tracing. And I usually start off by lowering this down. Something like that. Then I will simply hit render. Let's lock the render view. Actually, before getting into that, let's create a stage. I will add in a cube, make it editable, delete these polygons. Then I will select that polygon and change its Y position to zero. I want a huge stage, so I will scale this up. Now let's drop this one into a sub D. I will select these points and weight them. Right click, weight sub D. And finally, I will weight that edge as well. Since we don't have enough resolution in this sub D, I will increase that up to four. The good thing is, I could always go back to that edge and change its weight amount. This one is looking fine. Let's move it back. Now I will select my bottle and move it up. Okay, now it is time to create an Octane cam. I will enable it first. I usually work with narrow lenses, so I will set this to 8 to 5. Now we can reset these out. I will adjust the cam. Seems great. Let's hit render again. Nice. I think it is time to, you know, add the lights in. Lights and area light. Let's go to the top view and set this to perspective. I will change this to quick shading. I will basically work in that panel. By doing so, I will not change the cam in, in the first perspective view. Let me rotate this 90 degrees. Not the stage, but the lights. Hold on shift. And move it to the left. I will duplicate the same light by holding control, rotate it around, and yeah, this is going to be it. Obviously, these lights are too strong. Let's adjust the first one. Let's try 10. Seems right. Let's enable the other one. I will set this to 20 to have a little bit contrast in the render. Maybe we can set this to 20 and this one to 10. Yeah. That seems just perfect. You will notice some shadow behind the level. The reason is 
this label was not projected properly on the bottle because this bottle is still too low. So whatever I do, this label will not be projected properly on the surface. To fix that problem, I will simply subdivide this mesh. So I will simply drop this one into a sub -D. I will change the level of this sub -D because two is going to be too much. Let's set this to one and make it editable. I will call this bottle. Then I need to subdivide this label as well. One, then make it editable. Label. Now I will reproject this on the bottle. Shrink wrap. Then grab the bottle. Apply the deformer. Then I will push these polygons out. Enable the main sub -D. Let's see render. Yeah, now it looks way better. It's not perfect, but much better than the first version. Now I will see in Photoshop to texture this label object. In Photoshop, I have this texture that I exported from Cinema 4D and above that I have this texture. I simply took this out from the image plane. So this is why it's quite low, but it will do the job for this tutorial. The important thing over here is that this texture should cover the whole UV islands. Otherwise, you will see some gray in the render, especially in this area. To fix that problem, I could create a new layer. Then let me select the brush tool and pick that color up. Then simply paint these empty areas. Okay, that seems fine. Now I will save this as file, save as. Sorry, this will not give me the JPEG option. By the way, you can save this one as PSD. Actually, let's do that. But the label color. Now let's go back to Cinema 4D. I'm going to create a new glossy material. Open that up, search for texture, then I will simply load that texture. I just exported from Photoshop, which is this one. Then I will link this to the diffuse. I will put this one on the label and let's it render. Nice. I see no problem at all, which means that I could move on to the next material. Material, create a glossy one. This one is going to be on the bottle. So let's open up the node editor. I will call this bottle and this one label. Okay, this one is going to be orange. Why not we just steal that color from the image plane? By the way, it looks like I put the wrong material on the bottle. Yeah, obviously this is going to be too simple. So let's try to make it more interesting. And I will do that with the most powerful tool in the 3D world, which is the noise texture. So I will let this one in, then I will plug this one into the bump. This is going to be too large, obviously. So I will click on UV W transform and simply scale it down to 0.01 maybe. Let's render that region only and zoom in three times. We can try out the other ones. I think this circular one is looking quite fine. I just need to scale it more. Yeah, now let's adjust the intensity of the noise. So I will select the noise and set this to 0.1. Still too much, so 0.05. I want something subtle, you know. I don't want this bottle to be too rough. Yeah, this one is looking much better, right? 
I think we need to scale this again. Let's render this highlighted part. Seems quite fine to me, you know, if we have this kind of models, their textures are kind of like that. Let's set this to one. Now let's create a new material, duplicate this one. I will call this lid. Bottom and put it on the lid. That seems like likely darker. And to change it, I will simply open this up and set this to something like 90. Let's render again. Yeah, looks nice. And finally, another material, but this time it's going to be a specular one. Then I will put this one on the lead point one. First thing I'm going to change is this option, tin wall, because this is not a glass, it is a plastic. Then we could go to the transmission and change this color to blue. I will just make it less intense. Let's enable this imager in the tag of the cam. It is looking good already, but you know, we can make some adjustments like increase up the exposure, then maybe a little bit more contrast. Now let's duplicate this bottle. By the way, I cannot see the axis of this subdivision surface. Yeah, it is way off. Why don't we just put this one into a new sub D? Yeah. Now I will just simply duplicate this bottle two times. Then I will duplicate this material for the main bottle and put it on the second one. I will simply change its color. Oh, sorry, the wrong material. So I should put this one on the second bottle and change its color. Let's create another one and put this one on the third bottle. So this time... Let's pick a bluish color. If I zoom in, the bottles will look too noisy because right now these samples will not be able to render out these noises, so I will set this to 2K. By the way, let me adjust my final resolution. I think we can wrap up the tutorial. That was a quick demonstration of how you can render these kind of bottles in a studio lighting setup. That was quite simple and quick, but it will be enough to give you an idea about how you can approach these kind of product shots. I hope you liked and enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, just let me know anytime. You know, we can also join the Discord channel. You can find the link below and I will see you in the next ones. Bye.